Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Virtual DJ Tips. Today we're going to talk about probably the most exciting new feature in Virtual DJ 8, which is the sampler. Now the sampler gives you the ability to have an unlimited number of samples. You can use audio, video, and picture sampling. Today we're going to do an overview, but we'll likely have to do more detailed videos in order to get the full gist of what this sampler can really do. So without any further ado, let's jump right into the software and have a look. All right, so the first thing we have to do is find the sampler. Now the sampler is nested in the side view, just to the right hand side. You can see it here, it's got a nice pad view. Comes with some samples by default. Now the sampler is capable of 64 samples per bank with unlimited banks. So currently we are in one bank right now. If we go to the top, we can see that the bank name is Instruments. It's got two arrows, one on each side. If we click forward, it switches to another bank, Video and Scratch, Audio Effects, Famous, and back to Instruments. And you can add any bank that you want simply by right-clicking and selecting New Bank. Alternatively, you can click the little grid icon in the upper right-hand corner of the sampler, and it changes everything to a list view. Here you can adjust the volume of your sample, or you can add fields, so if you wanted to sort them, say maybe by BPM, it would show you the BPMs. And you can also trigger them in this view, just by clicking on the icon. Click on the trigger pad, and it gives us our trigger view again. You also see that the samples that are included by default are colored, that means they are being grouped so a group means that once one sample is triggered, you can only trigger one sample per group. Now what that does is if I trigger a second sample in that group, it cuts off the first sample and continues on seamlessly with the next sample. And you can go right down the list with all your samples that way, depending on how they're grouped. Now alternatively, if we wanted to, we could go to the left hand folder menu and we have this little sampler folder click the drop down menu and we see all our options here for the different banks now if i close the side view and i open up one of our sample folders we'll say audio effects for example i can trigger them right in the browser I can also adjust their volume here. I can add more fields like I did in the, in the side view, in the list view. And I can click the little gear icon to open the sample editor where we can make all of our adjustments in here for start and stop times, how we want them grouped, uh, if it's a drop or a loop, what color we'd like to make them, and what to name them. And we can also preview them with the play and play stutter buttons. If we go back into our side view and we click the little dot to the upper right hand corner which is your sampler options you can see your trigger mode now we have an on off which basically you press the sampler and it plays from the start of the sample to the end of the sample and then stops we have a hold function the sample will play from the beginning as long as you're holding the sampler pad we have the stutter function and the sample sample will play from the beginning each time you trigger the sample pad then we have an unmute function where the sample will be muted if the sampler pad is not pressed now you can make any of those modes for each individual sample so you can have anything in your bank maybe you'd like one sample to be a hold one sample to be an on off one sample to be a stutter or you can choose the options right here where your sample mode which is a global mode for the entire bank so anything that does not have a mode already selected will go by that global mode in the top here more in your sample options we have a pad layout it's set to automatic by default so it will automatically determine how many samples should fit in there depending on 
your controller or if you're using a mouse and keyboard and how many samples are already loaded into that bank. You can change this by default to four columns like we see here or we could choose it to something like eight columns or if you want something even more simple you could use something as two columns. I generally recommend it for to be on the automatic mode because it will automatically determine what the best layout is for your specific needs. Now if you have something you have you like a three column person and you like to have three columns that's your workflow then by all means put it on three columns. We also have audio routing options. So you've got your audio output set to master by default but you could make it deck one if you wanted to or deck two. Or alternatively, if you had maybe a four deck controller and you were only using two decks, deck three and deck four would show up in the drop down menu and you could use one of those decks to route your audio for your sampler. Now this will work with not only audio samples, but video and pictures as well. We can right click, select new, it'll create a new bank. Now what I've done, so I have some samples, we'll just use some sound clips. I can drag them in and I can put them anywhere in the decks or in the, in the sampler pads and that's where they'll show up. I can fill as many of these as I want. So if I just keep loading samples up, it'll fill all the pads. So we've got nine by default. And as I load the last sample, you saw that it jumped. So it has a couple more samples. We fill those in just with ever, whatever, just drag and drop them in. As soon as I load this sample, another section of pads comes up so that you can keep filling. If you're not happy with any of the samples, uh, command click or control click, just select remove. And if you're not happy with the bank in total, let's see, go back to our instruments, open up the sampler folder, we've got our new bank, right click it, delete it, it gets rid of it. Now when I cycle through my banks in the sampler pad view, the bank is now gone. Also in the sampler folder, you'll see a section called recordings. This is for recording all your samples. If you want to record a sample, you can, and then just drop it into one of the banks when you're done recording. That should give you a pretty decent overview of the sampler. As I said, we'll get into more detail in other videos so that you can really explore the options and see what you can really do with this really powerful feature. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends. Also subscribe below so that you get all the latest videos. Until next time, keep your head in the mix.